Okay, so now that you've watched this video, did you, were you able to pick out some of the main reasons why we are in a current biodiversity crisis? Hopefully, you were able to pick out that one, the two main reasons are that currently this, uh, the extinction rates and the extinctions that are happening right now are mostly due to human activity. So this is a case where you've got one species that's on the planet is causing the extinction and the decline of many, many other species. And that's never been seen on the planet before where you had one particular species having an effect on so many other species. The second um, thing that you should have seen from, from this is that the scale and the speed, so it's broader and faster than any of the other past extinctions. Remember we said that even though it looked like it was pretty abrupt, you know, some of these other extinctions, that was stretched out over millions of years. And we're talking just a few hundred years. And this, the rate, so if you were to, to compare rates of extinction, the rate of extinction uh, currently is faster than it has ever been seen on the planet before as well. Now we don't know the full scale of the biodiversity crisis that we're actually in, but we know that there are enough signs that we need to be doing something about this. And, and the nice thing is though, we are also a species that can look at this and recognize and make um, important decisions about what we should be doing to protect and conserve biodiversity. So what are the main drivers of diversity loss? Well, there seem to be five main drivers in this. One is habitat destruction. So here's a picture, you know, you've heard some of the descriptions about, you know, every second there's an acre of rainforest. And again, the, these estimates are all, all different, but the point is we continue to um, destroy native habitats in order to occupy them for either farmland or housing or, or for a, a variety of other reasons as well. One of the other main drivers is pollution. Pollution is, is a serious problem, especially in some parts of the world. Invasive species. Uh, here's an example of a carp that was caught at Utah Lake. And the introduction of carp at Utah Lake had a huge impact on the ecology of Utah Lake, and it's very different than what it used to be. Overexploitation. So this is an image of showing some of the fish markets where if you don't have good regula regulations and if you don't um, watch the way in which fishing is done, for example, you can overfish and that can lead to the destruction of many populations. And as soon as one species is lost because of the way that ecology works, you lose one species and you potentially are going to lose many others as they rely upon each other to, sur to survive. And also, as we just learned in our last video, in our last uh, sections, we've been talking about climate change. And clearly, the climate is changing, and that can have a huge impact also on diversity and on extinction rates of species. So if we look at this graph here, what we can see are some of the different trends and the driver's impact on biodiversity over the last century or so. And so the colors, if we come down here, we can see the colors indicate, uh, the, the lighter yellow indicates low, and as we get to the darker red, it's a very high impact um, factor. And we can also look at the er arrows, and if there's a, an arrow that's going down, it's a decreasing in impact. If it's across, it's continuing in impact. If it's increasing in impact, it's uh, slightly or somewhat increasing at a, a slanted arrow going up. And if it's an up arrow going straight up, then it's a very rapid increase, a very rapid increase in the impact on, the, um, on these species. And so we come back up here and we can see that in the forest area, you um, have you know, an increase for the most part of an impact, the drivers, the different, these different drivers of habitat change, climate change, invasive species, overexploitation and pollution, that for the most part there is an increase. The only one that has a decline would be the habitat change in the temperate areas. For the dry land areas, so temperate grasslands, the Mediterranean, the deserts, um, we also have an increase. And notice that climate change across so far the first two sections, and if we continue to look down across the remaining sections, it has an increase, and it's a very rapid increase. Although, for the most part, the colors are fairly low, so climate change potentially maybe is not such a big factor here. We move over and we can look at um, invasive species, and we see that invasive species 
uh, is an important factor, but not a lot of red. Here's one where there is a lot of red. So islands, for example, is, a, is an area where invasive species can have a huge impact. Overexploitation. There are a number of areas where we have overexploited the resources. One particular uh, case is the marine um, uh, exp exp overexploitation that's been happening. This is mostly overfishing that's, ha that's happened in certain parts of the world. And then pollution is a big problem, especially for inland water, the coastal areas, and the temperate grasslands. And, and pollution, again, is one of these things that is, has a rapid increase. It's, 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 um, its impact on the environment is drastically increasing. So climate change and pollution are drastically increasing, both with all arrows up. Again, this is because humans are part of the main drivers here. Um, but probably if you look across to which of these has the, the darkest colors, the darkest reds and oranges, it's habitat change. So habitat change has had the greatest impact on biodiversity over the last century. And, but it's also one of these that potentially we can think about ways to mitigate this as well. So now we can ask the question, why biodiversity matters? So if we list some things that come from biodiversity upon which humans rely, so this is why it matters for us um, in, in particular, we could say things like we get a lot of our food, our clothing, our shelter from biodiversity. And if we eliminate that biodiversity, we limit ourselves to have um, certain kinds of foods or to have in additional foods. We limit the types of clothing and the type of shelter that we may be able to, to, to use. We also know that biodiversity provides us with the oxygen that we breathe, right? I mean, we've learned about this with photosynthesis. Plants give off the oxygen that is so important for our, our, our whole planet and for us. Um, the biodiversity is so important in soil fertility. And if we destroy the microorganisms and these, you know, the, the types of organisms that are involved in creating a, a nice soil that, that is very fertile and that allows for plants um, to grow and for our crops to go grow. If we destroy that, that can be a big problem. We also have acquired many, many, many of our medicinal substances, our, our, uh, you know, our medicines come from biodiversity. And this little plant over here on the right is a great example of this. This is um, a periwinkle pr plant from Madagascar and one of the products from this plant, one of the extracts, it has been an extract um, that has been used in many types of cancer drugs. It's called a, it's called vincristine, and and so this is just one example where many of the drugs that we use and that have been developed have come from the biodiversity. Many of you have probably seen um, the the movie The Medicine Man with Sean Connery, and the whole premise of that movie is that there are people who live and, and they've been able to. Um, be cured from cancer because of some of the natural products that occur in their environment and so this scientist is out there trying to figure out what are those what are those chemicals what are those um, compounds that we could take advantage of and potentially solve many of our of our current diseases um, <clears throat> we could also list the consequences of biodiversity loss as we get rid of biodiversity we limit the potential for new discoveries of food and medicine as we lose biodiversity, this also can, ha can reflect some of the large-scale changes in the biosphere that could then downstream have huge catastrophic consequences that we're not aware of right now. And so because of the rate and because of the breadth at which humans seem to be having an impact on biodiversity, it's something we do need to be worried about. And conservation then is an important aspect of that being aware, being good stewards of our environment. And um, this is, hopefully is one of the things that we want you to take away from this course, that, that as you leave, you remember that you can always be um, interested in biology and be interested in, in, in what is around you. I mean, we are living organisms and we live in this, this living world and we all interact with each, with each other and we need to, as, as our knowledge of that uh, improves, we'll be able to better understand the interactions that are taking place and be better to be better stewards of this planet. And that's one of our hopes at the end of this course for, for you and for us, that we can go forward with a goal to, to be better biologists, to be better scientists, to be better critical thinkers, and to take care of this planet and um, ourselves in this planet for us and for future generations.